What's up, y'all? This creator we shoot films where we talk about filmmaking or anything cinematic. We do gear reviews. We do everything here that's dealing with, you know, shooting. Not that kind of shooting, but you know what I mean. Make sure to like and subscribe. Well, today we're going to talk about in Premiere Pro how do you create a 24 timeline with a clip that has a different frame rate. And then we might get into something else. You know, I sometimes I just talk. Let's do it. All right, here. So we got Premiere Pro. New project. I do not care what to call this. Call it whatever. Cuda. That's cool. That's what you want. If you got it. Hit OK. Gotta let us load up. All right. Now, we got this. Now, I like to bring in my footage. I'm going to bring in some green screen footage. The green screen footage was shot at 59 frames per second or 59.94, whatever you want to call it, 60 frames, whatever. Um, I like to shoot my music videos usually at 59 frames per second, so then I have the choice to slow it down later. So that's what we got. And if you need to find out what your clips are when you have them in here, just right click, go to properties, and you will see here it's 59.94 frames per second 4096 by 2160 that's true 4k dci and this was shot with a black magic pocket 4k i do not want this docked but yet it went ahead and docked it close panel all right so this is how i create my sequence i grab my clip and you can either bring it down here or you can just drag it to the timeline all right that's gonna place it there Oh, now, before you start cutting up, you want to create a 24 frames timeline. Because right now, it created, if you go up here, sequence, sequence settings, it created a 59 frames timeline. Okay, now this is the timeline we're dealing with. All right, not your actual clip. Now, it did it because the clip is 59. But with the timeline, we want the timeline to be at 24 or 23.976, whatever you may, whatever you want. I'm gonna put it at 24. And then everything else is fine. You know, I sometimes I, I, I'll click this just for the heck of it, be real with you. I don't know if it matters or not. But everything's fine. You gotta change nothing else other than 24p. All right. And this, the frame size. Because right now it's 4K. Now, if you're gonna deliver in 4K, you would just leave that alone. All right. But I'm not going to deliver. Most people ain't delivering in 4K. I mean, some people are, but you know who you are. So I go to 1920. And I used to start off at 800. All right. 1920 by 800. Okay. Now, what it did was, by now, the reason why I didn't put 1920 by 1080 is because 1920 by 1080 is the whole thing. So at 1920 by 800, it gives me some, some black bars. So if I go like this, you'll see these black bars automatically. It automatically creates the black bars. You don't have to do that dumb overlay that some people do. They put a, another layer of fake bars on top of their video footage to make it look like this. Just 1920 by 800. And you're good. Anyway, this is 4K, so the footage is, you know, at 100. You want to put it at 50% to bring it down see the th another thing with 4k a lot of people just get 4k just to get 4k you want 4k because it, get, it allows you the, the ability to punch in and make one shot almost two shots you know what I mean and not lose quality so if right now at this point let's say we, we, we you know let's say we're going like this okay everything's cool then right there I want to punch in a little bit well, I can punch in a little bit because we at 50%. You know what I'm saying? So we got all the way up to 100% to not lose quality. We can go up to 100 technically to not lose any quality at all. But you get the idea. The reason why you want 4K is not because it's 4K only, but because you're going to deliver in 1080. So that gives you the ability to scale it up a little bit, to reframe it and not lose resolution. You feel me? And then there, if you wanted some slow motion, sometimes just right click it, speed duration, and you would go 40 is your, your limit for that. And now, 
You know what I'm saying? So, cause see, if you export it at 59 frames per second, it has no motion blur. It just looks weird. Things just look too, too perfect sometimes. It just don't look right. So now you got your clip all done. You got your video done. You're on a 24 frames per second timeline. File, export, media. You want it to be H.264. You can leave it at 1920 at 800, or sometimes it'll say 1920 by 1080. That's fine too. It's going to do the same thing. Um, I always put render at maximum depth. I'll, me personally, I go to CBR. When I'm going to YouTube, I go all the way. You don't have to. Um, I go all the way. It's going to be longer, it's going to be a bigger size, a bigger file size. But that's what I do. You'll probably be fine at about 25, 20. Some people do 15. But I go all the way because I want it all. And I use, and I always check, use maximum render quality. Audio, that's fine. 48. This is all fine. Bit rate, 320. Don't let it be at 128 and nothing of it's there. Change the 320, it's going to sound better. And that's it. Then right here, you label it, whatever you're going to call it, whatever you're going to save it to, and save and export it. I ain't going to export it. And that's it, man. Nothing crazy. Just a little quick little tutorial for you to know how to import different frame rates, but put it on a 24 frames per second timeline. Very important. Export at 24p, all right, or 23.976. All right, yo, if I forgot something, you know, let me know. Put it in the comments. I'll get at you. You know what I mean? Again, if you got another concept, you got another tutorial idea, let me know too. I appreciate it. All right? All right, y'all. I'm about to bounce. So, y'all be blessed. Be safe out there. You know what I mean? And like I always say, it is what it is. I'm out.